oh hello everyone hello and welcome welcome to the little lycac podcast episode 70. my name is amanda and i'm coming to you from derby in the united kingdom and this is a knitting and crochet podcast you are very welcome um right let's get straight into it today is saturday march the 30th and i'm coming to you from my little um garden office in derby in the uk and it's about three o'clock quarter to three in the afternoon I've been really busy this morning actually I've been dyeing lots of yarn this morning ready for the Sodbury yarn over which is happening next weekend which I'm so excited about I am hoping I'm going to vlog a little bit of the preparations this week um, including um, trying to pack up the car with everything and um, yeah hopefully record a little bit down at that new yarn show which is just outside Gloucestershire gorgeous little town called Chipping Sodbury so yeah, that is happening next week. So this morning I've been dyeing. What have I dyed this morning? Um, mostly, uh, yeah, so sparkle yarn and just the 7525 sock, sock yarn. That's what I've been dyeing this morning. So I have got three finished objects to show you and new cast on and some progress on some of my whips and got out something that had been hibernating for a little while for a few months. So yeah, plenty to show you. Um, we've got no giveaways this week because it's not quite the end of March yet. Uh, we've still got today and tomorrow um, for the Soxy and You Know It, um, the Soxy and You Know It make along. And if you've got some a pair of socks that you started in February, you have got till the end of the 31st of March to get that into the uh, Ravelry thread. And then I'll be picking a winner out of there. And then also, if you cast on a pair of socks during March at all, you can enter that into the Socks and You Know It Make Along all the way up to the end of April. So no giveaways this, this week, um, but there will be one in the next um, podcast. I tend to podcast two weekly as much as I can. And so, yes, it'll be two weeks uh, before we do the next one. Right, so shall I show you? So this was almost finished last time I saw you. It is the blanket I've been making for my parents-in-law. And thank you, thank you, thank you for all of <laughs> all of you who did leave nice comments about it last time. Because last time I sort of said it wasn't perfect, it was a bit wonky and all the rest of it. And actually you guys, you know, were just brill and gave me lots of reassurance. So I am really pleased with it. I've finished crocheting it all together and I've put on a border. All I did for the border was just two rows of, well, the first row was just single crochet. We don't have single crochet in this country, do we? Just double crochet all the way around. And then the second row was treble crochet. So yeah, it is finished. And actually I do now really like it. Oh, I've just seen an end there that is a, sticking out a little bit. Let's just snip that. Um, but yes, this will be, well, I was going to be, taking it to my parents-in-law uh, on Tuesday this week. However, cut a long story short, Stu it needs a haircut desperately and his groomer, his usual groomer, has had to cancel and not been able to cut his hair. So I've got to take Stu for a haircut on Tuesday, so I'm not going over to my parents-in-law, but I will see them the following week when I will take this over for them then. So although it's supposed to be kind of like an Easter gift, they won't get it till the week after Easter. But yes, it's all finished. I will put a picture up here of the finished, complete finished blanket. So this is the Stitch on Sunday Blanket by Kelly Menzies, also known as Roro and Cades. So every square has a different stitch um, pattern. All lace, all beautifully textured. And actually I am really, really pleased with it. I knitted this all in Stylecraft Special DK for the main colours and then the cream was just a cheap acrylic cream, a cheap acrylic cream that I had in um, my stash from a long time ago. So I'm just trying to fold it up a little bit. <laughs> so there are 40 squares in total. As I say, I did it in Stylecraft Special DK. The colour. The colours I used were Vintage Rose, Teal, I think that was Fuchsia Pink, Meadow and Plum. So those were the five colours I used. So that is finished and I'm really pleased with it. 
definitely happier with it than I was uh, two weeks ago when I was kind of like, oh, I'm not really sure. But yeah, I think it's going to be lovely. All right, so my other whips. The Talking about the Soxy and You Know It make along a few minutes ago. The other whip, uh, or no, other finished object. <laughs> this is going well today, isn't it? The next finished object is from the Soxy and You Know It Cal. And this was a pair of socks in self-striping yarn. And last time you saw this, I'd finished one and I was partway through the second and I was saying that I wasn't really enjoying the colours on this one. But they are finished now. And they are a good matching pair. I only used one of the 50 gram balls. So I have got a complete uh, unopened, untouched ball of um, the main red regia regia color there um because i didn't want to break into this second uh ball the oh there is a slight difference this sock has got a few more stripes of that green uh than that sock so that sock's got a few more stripes of the blue that i used um to uh for the toes so that means i have got a full skein of that yarn still which i may put in as one of the prizes for um, the socks you know make along later in the year um, because I definitely don't feel the need to knit another pair because I do quite like them don't get me wrong but I also said that I was a little bit disappointed with them um, too much brown for my taste but uh, so yeah but there is a full skein of it left have I got I don't think I've got no I haven't got the ball uh, band with me but all the previous information has been on um, all the information has previously been on the podcast it is a regular four ply I think it was a cafe facet um it was it was a cafe facet colorway but that means then that monday will be the first of april and monday i will be able to open up my fourth ball of yarn in fact let's go and get it oh yes yeah, so and monday i will be opening this one no i won't oh yes i will i thought for a minute that said seven <laughs> In the, it looked like a seven like that but it's actually four yeah it is definitely number four so obviously I can see that this is one that's already wound up so I'm trying to remember if I can because I'm pretty sure it's an indie dyed one but I cannot remember whose it is and it doesn't look like I've put anything in for a contrast colour either which means hmm don't know I think it might be yarn badger but it doesn't look like I put a contrast colour in. So I might, when I open it up, I might choose to put a contrast, find a contrasting one to go with it. We'll have to wait and see. So I will be opening that up on Monday. I did consider opening it today um, in front of the camera, but I'm going to wait till Monday like a good girl. I am. Can you tell I'm really tempted to open it now? Um, okay, so that was my second, yes, yeah, so the second finished object were the socks in. You know it socks getting ready to cast on the next pair of those on Monday um but I have got another finished object well I say I've got sort of got it with me because I've got half of it with me because I finished it is another pair of socks and it is the um what's the pattern called woodland no winter's frost pattern by this handmade life and I realise I can't show you them as a pair because the other one is um, still up at Nibble Needles and Hooks as a, a um, sample. So you're going to have to trust me. But although what I can do, I can prove that I've knitted both because the other sock, the pattern is down the other side. So last time you saw this, I think I was up to there. So not far, hadn't got far to go. So what I will do, because I want to enter this into a make-along as well, which is the top it off Mal. Um, so I will have to put, because I have got a photo of the other finished socks, so I shall have to do a little, like, a little montage to put them both together to prove that I have knitted both socks. Because <laughs> I haven't literally physically got that second one, or the first one with me at the moment. Anyway, yeah, this is my Frosted Berries colourway, uh, which came as a sock set. There's a couple of those left in the shop. Um, once those have gone, whilst I may carry on repeating the colourway of the actual sock, I won't necessarily be doing it as a set with the um, mini 
um, partly because at the moment it's very difficult to buy minis because all the dyers are doing their advent calendars so minis are all out of stock everywhere. <laughs> I'm not launching my advent calendar yet, I'll be launching that in another couple of months time. Um, so yeah it's actually quite difficult to get hold of minis at the moment. So anyway I will probably though do some more I think as I say I think there's maybe two left in the shop with the sock set with the mini and then um, if I can't get any more minis for a while then I shall perhaps just um, dye up just the main colourway. Anyway so yes there we go those are finished so that is two pairs of socks. I think in March I finished the litmus cow, the blanket and at least two pairs of socks. So I've been doing really well with my sort of stash busting trying to knit more than I buy. Um, I have bought something else this month which I'll show you towards the end of the podcast um, but in total even with what I've bought for the full year I'm at something like I have knitted four and a half thousand meters well not just knitted because there's a few bits that have been um, donated and, and, and uh, got out of the house in other ways as well but four and a half thousand meters um, more has gone out of the house than come into the house so that's pretty good don't you think I think so I'm telling myself that so that in case next week I get tempted and buy a little bit more right so those are my finished objects for this week let's show you works in progress Ta -da! okay what should I show you right so this one is a sock that now get, lives in the car most of the time and it's one of those projects that if I'm going somewhere or I end up being somewhere um, and I'm hanging around waiting I have got a project on the go and it is a pair of socks because they're just easy to carry around I do knit other things as you'll see um, so this is in a oh, patterning self patterning yarn commercial yarn and it was on one that I considered going into the socks and you know it make along um, balls but I decided I was going with just sort of proper stripes so it didn't make it in but it is being knitted <laughs> um, and it's a commercial yarn and stylecraft I think yeah stylecraft head over heels walking in nature and the colourway, the shade is 3116, which is stride, and it knits up like that. Oh, it knits up like that. So I am knitting these on 2.25mm needles, just as a vanilla sock. I did wind off the yarn so that it started here, so I'd got those stripes on the cuff because I thought that would look nice. I haven't done a huge amount on those last time you saw them I think was just where I've put in that stitch marker there so perhaps it wasn't really worth showing you these but uh, the progress keeper as I, said, I will move that anyway so um, and I'll go back in the car and you might not see it now for quite a while because it might be a while before I do any more work on it. Kind of depends where I'm going and what I'm up to. Kind of like if I know I'm going somewhere where I, I'm going to be knitting, I sometimes take something specific. These are more like kind of like in the car for those times when I don't realise I'm going to be waiting. So to make sure I've always got something in the car. Um, okay, then. It does feel like it's a lot of socks today. Um, another project that I got out, my daughter Eloise is home for a week. She's in her final year at uni, so she's come home for a little bit of a break. And I started a pair of socks for her. Um, in the new year as part of the 12 cast ons with the lovely Anne from Yarn and Yarns and when she came home she did say ah how are my socks getting on mum so I got the hint and uh, I got these out and I've just done a little bit of work on them so when you saw these last I believe I was up to about there so it's got a Christmas uh, progress keeper on it in fact. Um, so the story behind these socks really are my daughter um, who has now actually learnt to knit 
but my daughter was saying how much she really wished she could knit socks and uh, she had to say she has learned to knit but she hasn't done socks yet and she also fell in love with this yarn which is actually from Sostrine Green and it is a self-striping yarn but there was only one 50 gram ball and I was like I'm not sure I'll be able to get out a full pair of socks for you because she's same size feet as me so I'm going to struggle to get one pair of socks uh, a full size a full leg pair of socks out of that one ball so we've paired it with this yarn which is West Yorkshire Spinners um let's see if I've got the ball band in here I have the ball band the colorway is Penny Royal which is that one we don't actually have the ball band for this. It was the last ball of it in the shop and the ball band was missing. So we don't have the ball band for this. So I can't tell you the colourway details and things. Although I think I did find it on Ravelry. So if you go to my Ravelry page, project page for it, we'll be in there. The pattern we're doing, I'm doing, I think we, like Eloise, is involved in this. Uh, the pattern I'm doing is the Prism Socks, which is a free pattern. Uh, I will put the designer's name um in the description below and i've just got to the heel flap i'm knitting these on 2.5 mil needles so i've done a slightly different stitch count um because 2.5 mil needles are a little bit bigger uh, than what i usually use and so i've gone gone for a slightly smaller number of stitches um kept the patterns it means the pattern's fine still though and um yeah and these needles are rubbish they are bamboo 2.5 mil and i've got a feeling they might have been like a freebie from a magazine or something like that and we can't can you still oh, little fly in front of me there i don't know if you can see how bent that is i can't really tell there can you see how bent that is <laughs> that one's quite straight but the, no even that one's got uh, so they are not great <laughs> but I don't like swapping needles part way through a project so I always worry it will affect the gauge so I'm going to have to put up with them also the yarn the Sostrine Green yarn is quite sticky I would say and um, they, it catches a little bit on those needles as well so it's not the fastest project but you know I thought I would do a little bit of work on those while Eloise was home <laughs> And also before I cast on the next pair of socks for the Soxy Cow. Um, right, is that it for all my whips? No, it's not. So, also, the Whitmore Jumper. So, the Whitmore Jumper is one of my Make 9. I'm a bit worried about it, guys. I'm a little bit worried that it's going to be a little bit small. I didn't do a gauge swatch. Don't don't shout at me i didn't do a gauge swatch because i was confident that dk acrylic yarn four mil needles i would get gauge however however uh, and after i've done a certain amount as well i did sort of try and check anyway i'm measuring it now my gauge is much smaller than it should be i'm measuring the actual jumper and it, so what i think i'm going to have to do is actually try it on so i'm going to have to try it on which means putting it onto some barber cords, which I've got some. Um, but there's part of me putting off trying it on in case it is too small. This is how much I've done. So last time you saw it, I was there. And then literally the next row, I split for the sleeve. So I've done all of this stocking stitch since I last saw you. I am knitting this in cheap Aldi acrylic. From probably about 10 years ago it's very sparkly it's not the nicest yarn to work with but it's it's all right and I think it'll soften um, but yeah the biggest concern at the moment is that it's not gonna be big enough and it's supposed to have lots of positive ease because that was my other theory was even if the gauge was slightly out it has you know it had something like four inches at least maybe six inches of positive ease hmm yeah I don't know may have messed this up and I can't even think that if I make it and finish it anyway at this size who else would like it um I mean Eloise might like it but she wouldn't be able to wear this acrylic it's just too scratchy Amelia certainly wouldn't like it I just don't think it's her style it's my other daughter um so I don't know who I would give it to 
don't know who I would gift it to if I finish it and it's too small for me. Don't know. So it's kind of, I've lost my mojo for it at the moment. I might cast on something else from my um, Make 9 and then come back to that. I don't know. I know I need to try it on. If I try it on, then I know what the situation is. We shall see. Right. Um, another whip. So having finished my mother-in-law's, uh, parents-in-law blanket, I gave myself permission to start a new blanket. Although to be fair, as you saw last time, I had already started it. This one is a crochet blanket and it is beautiful. I'm still loving it. Although I haven't kept up with the sewing in the end, so I must do that before I do the next row on it. So this is the Spring Frost Blanket by Attic24, which is a blog. Uh, you can get this for free on her website, the pattern. And it's just beautiful. I absolutely love the colours. Absolutely love the colours. I'm knitting, uh, crocheting this on a four mil hook. I did do a gay swatch for this, um, but the actual starting chain was on a 4.5 mil hook, which is, again, Lucy's advice to do that so that you don't get uh, too tight a cast on chain. I know you don't really call it casting on from crochet, but I still do because <laughs> I'm a knitter more than a crochet. Anyway, I have got in, so yeah, last time you saw this, we had only done those three stripes. So I've done all of this and it is so beautiful so let's move that progress keeper so beautiful and it's just really nice to like maybe when I've been knitting on other things in the evening just look like at the end of the evening before I go to bed spend half an hour 45 minutes or so just putting in uh, one I say a stripe uh, a stripe of one color is two rows and it does take me probably about 45 minutes to do that so yeah, I'm not doing one every evening, but I'm sort of trying to sometimes in the evening when I'm getting a little bit tired and concentration on other projects is sort of getting a bit low. I um, then just whip this out because it is really easy, really easy. And even the ends are really easy because that's usually where I go wrong. So really, really loving this. It's a spring frost blanket and I am using Stylecraft Special DK in the colours that Lucy actually recommends. So it's 15 different colours. I'm not going to read them all out to you. Um, if you are interested in the pattern and the colourways, etc., uh, it is all on my Ravelry page. Yes, I think I'm pretty sure I put in all of the colours on my Ravelry page as well. And um, But if you go to the Lucy24, no, the Attic24, her name is Lucy, the lady who runs that. Uh, if you go to the Attic24 website or even Wool Warehouse, because I know they sell the kits, it will tell you all the different colours that you need. I'm just going to put that back up there. So, yes, isn't it beautiful? Okay. I do have another whip that's been sort of hibernating a little bit to show you. So, I started this one on the 26th of December known as Boxing Day here in the UK and it's the Stephen West Hyber Knit Along the Glittering Snowscape Shawl and I think you have seen this a couple of times but I've done a lot of work on it since you last saw it a lot and in fact I am on the last section I am on the border so let's try and hold this up in a way where you can see it Now I am using my own hand dye yarn for this in a range of colours. They don't all have colourway names in fact though. <laughs> though this one actually I think is my Gonzalo colour. Um, so I dyed these kind of just specially for this and this I, I have got a um, colourway called Gonzalo which is pretty much this colourway and I also have a colourway called Titania which is pretty much that colourway. But it's got a mixture of sparkle and um, just my luxury four ply base. So these two are the sparkly ones. 
these two are not sparkly and the Gonzalo is not sparkly so it is coming along although I said it's coming along really well I kind of powered through some of these sections because the last time you saw it yeah last time you saw it I was up to there on that lace section that section went quite well that section went uh, I think a bit fiddly on that section um, but the border is quite time consuming now you might be surprised to see that there ends on this because there is the Stephen we weaving Stephen technique which I did use for most of the ends but it's, you can't really use it so well for this section I don't think um, I actually found it really fiddly so I'm just kind of went right do you know what I'm just going to leave the ends and sew them in after um, because you're changing this uh, colour each of these stripes of colour are different each time because you're using colours from earlier in the in the shawl so yeah I've got a long way to go <laughs> um, because there you go I've got all of that edging still to do and part of me had wanted to have it done by next weekend to take it to the Sobri yarn over but that's not going to happen is it so there's no way that's going to be done in a week so I'm just going to keep working on it though and I have got quite got into quite a good pattern um, rhythm with this so I think you know it's going, to, it's going to be one of those that maybe work on it for an hour or so every evening get a certain um, amount done on it each evening and um, then put it to one side because it gets a bit boring because it's, you're not seeing the progress really so yeah I think that's just going to be one a little at a time but oh I do love it I do really really like it So that is the glittering snowscape shawl. Nice big thick shawl, probably be ready, finished, you know, just in time for summer. Yay! <laughs> um right, I think the only other thing I've got to show you is a new cast on and then an acquisition. So a new cast on. I have dyed up uh, for little ICAC some DK yarn and I've not um, done DK before so I, the first lot of DK went up to Nibbles, Needles and Hooks at the beginning of March and there is some in the shop, the Etsy shop um, but I thought it would be actually quite nice to knit something in the DK yarn and also in particular I thought I would knit a pair of socks with it because when I'm at the yarn show next week and there's another one in a couple of weeks after that at Alpaca Evolution in um, Singleborough near Milton Keynes. Um, I thought it'd be nice to have a pair of socks knitted up in the DK that I could show and say, look, yes, uh, you can do two socks, a full adult pair of socks in one skein of DK. So let's hope we can. <laughs> and I decided to do it in this colorway, which is the Lagoon. So it's mostly blues, but it has just got the tiniest little bit of pink in it as well. And this is how it's knitting up. So I've nearly done the first one. Um, I should be able to get the second one done by next weekend. Um, although obviously at the show, if need be, I need to really have one, but I'd like to finish it because I'd like to be able to double check that you can definitely get an adult pair of socks out of one skein of DK. I'm sure you can. Um, the pattern I'm using is, well, I say pattern, I just went to Crazy Sock Lady, I knew she'd got a DK pattern, vanilla sock pattern, so I just used her numbers because I had no idea how many to cast on and what size needle to use. So it's a free pattern, this Crazy Sock Lady, so basically it was 48 stitches for a medium size sock on three, now am I using 3.25 or three and a half? 3.25 mil needles. Be interesting to see actually how um, that goes um, for me because quite often with sock patterns with um, fingering weight yarn, I go down a needle size. I use 2.25 instead of 2.5. Um, but I decided to do, use 3.25 mil. I have tried it on actually and it felt fine. 
thinking about it. I did try it on the other night. So yeah, um, in fact, I haven't got a lot left to do on this before I'm on the toe. I think I just need about another centimetre of leg, of foot, and then I'm on the toe, centimetre of toe. So yeah, you can just see tiny little bits of pink, pinky purple in there. So I'm really liking how this is um, knitting up. This is the soft sock. So it's 75, 25. That's the only DK weight yarn I've got at the moment. I'm going to see how it goes, see if it sells, see if people like it. If so, I might then look at trying to get some of my luxury base, which is 85, 15% on, um, on the um, DK weight, because that would be lovely for garments. But, uh, anyway, so yeah, that needs working on, because I need to finish the pair before next weekend. So I um, think that is my last project to show you. So all I've got left to show you is my acquisition from yesterday. But let me tell you where I bought it from because it's somewhere a little bit different, which is why I allowed myself to buy something because it was somewhere different and it was um, an unusual kind of yarn shop because it was a floating yarn shop. Um, it was actually called The Beanie Boat. And there were two ladies who live on this boat as far as I'm aware they both live on the boat um and they sell yarn and also handmade soap I could be wrong but I think they make the soap themselves uh there's hand dyed yarn but that is from other dyers so the hand dyed yarn is was from um there was some ducky darlings there was some uh peak district yarn which are both local to me and there was also Yarn Unique, uh, who was Nibble Needles and Hooks, Yarn Dyer of the Month last month, as it happened. So those three dyers I see quite regularly anyway. Uh, don't get me wrong, beautiful yarns, all of them. Then there were a uh, couple of other dyers that I didn't know. Um, but anyway, none of it really particularly grabbed me. I mean, there were some lovely yarns. Um, however, this is what she'd also got some commercial yarn and the irony is I am doing a make along to try and use up some of my commercial yarn and so far um I this year I have on my socksy and you know it knitted three pairs of socks and commercial self-striping yarn and then bought two <laughs> anyway but look at this you're going to see this and you're, you're going to understand I hope you're going to understand why I bought this So it is an opal yarn and for, apologies if you can hear a lot of scraping weird noises, husband's doing a bit of cleaning up in the garden um, and it's going to knit up like that. Isn't it beautiful? So I could not resist that. The colourway is called Sunny and I'm never sure which is the shade and which is the dye lot so I'll just hold it up there. But yes, I thought that was beautiful and it was a lovely sunny day and um, it's a barge, as I say, it's a, like a canal boat and they were on their way to a market somewhere, not sure where, and they couldn't get there because of flooding um, and so instead they came to a, um, a what's the word I want, a dock, <laughs> there's a big marina not far from me, about 20 minutes drive. It's called Mercia Marina in uh, South Derbyshire. And yes, yeah, so they were they're there all of this weekend, the Easter weekend. Uh, and they've got this little put up shop that they, or pop up shop. I also bought um, a project bag as well. So I got this project bag from them, um, which is made by Sindra Arts, who I have definitely heard of. In fact, I may. I've had something from her before myself. Um, so that's some Singer Arts, and it's a beautiful bag actually, really nice quality. And it's got a pocket, two pockets inside actually, so you can put your needles or things in there. And yeah, I'm just thinking I'm sure I've got a bag made by this, well, no, I haven't got the bag. I'm sure I bought a bag made by um, this company, uh, this business. Uh, which I gave to Eloise. So I couldn't resist the bag. It smells lovely because not only then, so I bought the bag and the yarn, they gave me for free a little. Yeah, so it is, um, the soap is made by them. They gave me a little free sample of their soap, which smells 
absolutely divine. It's called Summer Fruits. Enjoy a free sample from Soapy Goodness. Uh, four ingredients, see beanieboat.com. Summer Fruits smells absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to pop that in there, in that bag. So it's just going to smell delicious. So it, does, it smells like really fruity and um, sweet. A bit like... Um, Trying to think of some sweet, fruity sweets that we get in this country. Do you remember? I can't remember what they were called. Anyway, um, but opal fruits, which are now called Starburst, kind of that kind of smell, but it's like tutti fruities. I wonder who else remembers tutti fruities. Anyway, that's what it smells like to me, tutti fruities. It smells gorgeous. Right, okie dokie, my lovely people. I think that is it from me. Um, I've got a little bit of video from the Beanie Boat um, little trip. So I went there yesterday with some friends from my knitting group. So there were six or seven of us, seven of us I think. And then we stopped and had some lunch at the cafe there. And it was very nice. So next time I see you, plan is to give you a little bit of a vlog of the Sodbury Yarnover uh, show. I've um, got a few things I'm stressing about that. Not the, the yarn, the yarn's all being dyed, although I've got another dyeing day to do this week. But I'm just having a few issues with my display because I thought I had got five foot panels for my display. It turns out I've only got four foot ones. So I'm desperately trying to get some five foot panels. I'm supposed to be driving up to Buxton on Monday to pick some more up. Right, that's enough of my waffle. Thank you for joining me. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment down below. Thank you for all the lovely comments on the last video. In fact, I'm sorry I got really behind on um, replying to those. It's because I've been still been at work up until um, Thursday. Uh, so I will try and actually reply to all of those before I put this video up. Um, I, re I do read every comment though. I read every comment that gets left. Um, but sometimes I am reading them literally at break um, on my at work and things like that so I don't always get a chance to reply uh, but thank you so much thank you and uh, I will see you in a couple of weeks oh and don't forget if you are coming to Sobri over please pop over and, and introduce yourself to me um, I would love to to actually see some of you in person and uh, if you watch the podcast it, it's it's just lovely so nice to actually meet people who watch it in person so Thanks very much. Bye.